So if you're like me, Apex Legends has been ruining your sleep schedule. No, seriously, bro. Like, for real. This is the last one, okay? Last one. I gotta go to bed. I got school tomorrow. Why is it that this game makes us throw away all our responsibilities and care about absolutely nothing going on other than getting this W? Well, the reason it probably takes so long to get the dub is because you keep dying. That's what we're gonna talk about today. The five reasons why I, myself, and I see other people keep dying in Apex Legends and how to avoid those situations so you can get dubs, go to sleep, and actually, you know, take care of your human responsibilities, which we all have to do at some point. I don't know what you're talking about, buddy, but I got a diaper and some Uber Eats on the way, okay? That baby could put itself to sleep. Child mistreatment aside, let's get into the first reason why you might keep dying in Apex Legends, and that's because you think the Mozambique is actually the best gun in the game. This is not a drill. This man actually thinks the Mozambique is good. The Mozambique, more like the Mozambique, you know what I'm saying? Shoot, I call it the Mozambique. <laughs> All right, no, I'm sorry. Listen, I ain't getting derogatory here. We ain't bringing anybody down. It's all about lifting people up. But if you truly think the Mozambique is the best gun in the game, you just haven't played this game enough. You need to figure it out. Your gun values are all off kilter. You want a sniper when you need a close range. You want a shotgun when you need a sniper. And you think the Mozambique is better than a Peacekeeper or an EVA 8 in any situation that may ever come across. This is not what you need to be a better player and this is probably why you keep dying. Get your gun priorities and value. Watch some guides. Check out my video of ranking every weapon and every gun and see some other people's perspectives. The Mozambique and weak weapons will not win you fights. If you have worse weapons in a fight, you will probably lose and that's probably one of the main reasons why you're dying in the first place reason why you're dying number two you gently shoot people in the butt from halfway across the map with no way to knock them down in an open field now I, I just had to set up a scenario but let's get into the depth of what this really means it means that you're shooting people without the opportunity to actually finish them up rezzing is pretty easy in this game especially with a lifeline and what you do when you shoot people from that far is you let everyone else know what your position is you should only be shooting at people if you can actually finish them or do something in that fight but if you have to traverse the entire range of a map and go through hazardous areas maybe even run away when the circle's closing in on you there's no reason to take that shot one of the biggest mistakes i see newer players do is they take shots when they don't need to get their location revealed and then better players try to circle in on them knowing exactly where they are if your bullets are going to feel like a gun butt massage like just wait brother just wait go up find a better angle do not reveal your location if they don't see you. It's a tactical advantage by shooting far away but not confirming any kills or not making sure that your squad can then clean up that squad. All you've done is give away your advantage. This is a big mistake and that's probably one of the big reasons why you keep dying. You know, this makes so much sense to me, Rende. <laughs> but I have Kraber, so I shoot him now. This ain't a shooting range. Go to the practice arena for that, man. This is Battle Royale. You gotta be the last team standing, which means you shouldn't give away your position unless you know you're gonna win that next fight. Another the reason why you keep on dying in Apex Legends is because you always land in a different spot than the game before. Now listen, hear me out on this one. When you land in a similar spot over and over again, you get to learn the map. You get to learn the angles. You get to learn where the loot is, and that is super valuable. That means you get to the good guns first. You get to the body armor first. You know where the danger spots are. You know where to hold, and you know where to retreat if things go bad. You and me, we're not Shroud. We're not Ninja. We're not Seagull. We can't land down in a hot zone with a Mozambique and no body armor and 1v3 an entire squad. That, that ain't us. I mean, if that's you, you should be watching this video. You're clearly not dying a lot. If you are watching this video, though, then you cannot do those things. So you got to put yourself in a position to win these fights by getting better gear, by having better positions, and obviously having guns that are competitive to be able to take down at least a 1v1 or maybe a 2v1 if things get bad. If you land in a place like Skull Town or Market, there's a lot of loot. It's very specific as to where it is and what types of things spawn in those same locations and also there's a lot of ways to wiggle around that fight if things go bad or to push if things go well learning those two locations gets you usually geared up with good loot gets you good fights and because they're relatively popular but they're not always as chaotic as some of the hot zones are landing on ship this is one of the big things that changed my experience is that I just got familiar with a location and then I became very confident fighting in it knowing exactly where my enemies were gonna be approaching me and I started dying less and once you learn skull Town, once you learn market, you can add another one to the contact list. Always able to go back to, and if you're ever feeling lonely at night, you could send them a little you up and see if they answer. You know what? Uh, so what? Yes, I did send a you up text to a map location, and it's 2019. I'm I'm attracted to the map. Sue me. 
Sue me. Huh? You gonna do it? You're not. Alright, another reason why you might keep dying in Apex Legends is because your peripheral settings, your, your FOV, your FOV, your DPI are completely off. First, your DPI and your mouse sensitivity. Now, one of those things is in-game, one of those things is on your mouse. If you have a nice gaming mouse, you'll be able to adjust your DPI, usually in the software that comes with it. I have a Logitech mouse, a G903, so I go into my Logitech software, I adjust it to about, you know, 250, 300, 350, 400. Those are my range of DPI on my mouse. Now, in-game, you also have sensitivity. Now, this is important because what you want to do is make sure your sensitivity is low enough to where you are not overshooting your target when you aim. If you find yourself, like, course correcting, maybe trying to go to the right, but then going past your target, your sensitivity is too high and you need to lower it. Let's be real. If you don't have the right DPI and, and in-game sensitivity combination, if you have a 60 hertz monitor and you could have a 144 hertz, if you don't have a big enough mouse pad, all of these things are going to mean you are worse at this game and is going to result in some moments where you die to a player who just has all that stuff figured out. Now, fortunately, this is a tip that costs money, so you may have to buy a new mouse pad, new mouse, maybe a new monitor, but it will be worth it if you really want to get good at this game because this will improve your play significantly. I had a couple shooting experiences where once I got my 144 hertz monitor, it felt like the game changed. And don't even get me started on 244 hertz. That Alienware monitor will be mine. I will have it one day, damn it. If you feel like you can't hit anybody in a match, if you feel like you're bullets always miss if you just can never find enough damage to take somebody down then it's probably because your peripheral settings are off so find the balance that will help you to stop dying in apex legends another tip i'm gonna throw in there before we get to the final reason why you're dying in apex legends is just to go ahead and slow down a lot of people are trying to shoot so fast the action happens quick uh, but the problem is you need to be able to hit your shots first so just hit a few and then find yourself consistently hitting those few then hit more then hit more eventually you'll be hitting your entire magazine of bullets and you'll be able to continue dominating in apex the last reason why i guarantee you have been dying a lot in apex legends is because your fighting positioning is like the eiffel tower in paris everybody can see your ass the problem here is that you just need to be able to learn better movement and learn how to take fights in locations that don't expose you as well i know a lot of people who try to go out hey man i got the flank i got the flank but your flank puts you in an open field brother that ain't no flank you just lambs to the slaughter you're getting flanked at that point they turn around they shoot you you got no cover i mean at the end of the day what did you think was gonna happen well i had um <clears throat> I, had, I had thought that if i you know if i it, well if i put you know, it, um, <clears throat> a flank that exposes you more than them is a bad idea. So just get it right. Sometimes holding an angle, very much like if you watch any Counter Strike gameplay or if you watch any Rainbow Six gameplay, holding angles, staying in cover, those are the things that are going to net you more kills because people most likely will make the same mistake you were about to make and push you. You'll be able to see them, you'll be covered, you'll get the first shots, and they will just bring those sweet, sweet kills onto you. A good thing to think about is how much can they shoot me versus how much can can I shoot them? If you're flanking and you put yourself in a position where you could shoot them a lot and they can't shoot you at all, then that's a great flank. But if you put yourself in an exposure and it's 1v1, like it's a one-to-one -one ratio of they could shoot me a lot and I could shoot them a lot, it's probably not a good bet. You've already got them on the ropes, right? You've already got multiple teammates if you're the one pulling off a flank. So just slow play it, find the right angle, and then go after the kill. This is one of the main reasons why I've died in the past and why I see a lot of my teammates and friends dying in this game. They push too much, they push too far, are, they give up their cover and then they die yo and I got one more bonus I know I said five but I got one more that's gonna help you guys out as to why you might keep dying it's because you play in the caustic like a Bangalore. The Bangalese tiger prowling through the markets of school town trying to viciously stalk its prey and strike them down without a moment's delay. Oh wait no it's a relatively tall uh, Caucasian man just running around with gas throwing it at people expecting to kill them instantly. Oh sorry he's dead. That's not the way you want your special to end. A caustic is meant to set up in a room. A Bangalore can be on the prowl because she has that double time passive which makes her move so quickly. She has smokes that she could set up to buy some time and re-approach the fight or get out of the fight safely. The big point of this is play your class the way your class is meant to be played. A lot of people will be super aggro with a class that's more about setups or really 
really passive with a class that's about being super aggro. This is one of the things I've seen that really holds players back in this game and could be one of the reasons, might be one of the reasons you, yourself, are dying in Apex Legends. With that being said, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. I'm not going to try to make it too long, but I did want to give you that bonus tip and just say thank you for watching the content on the channel. But first off, thank you to everybody who's been subscribing and joining the channel lately. It's been awesome to be covering different games, although I play Paladins and Smite, I work as a professional esports caster, I'm in the gaming industry, it's great to be able to flesh things out on my YouTube channel and show you guys a different side of me. That humor, that education, that enlightenment, that fun that we could have together. Hopefully you guys stick around, find it enjoyable, and like sticking around for the content that I make. That's what it's all about. So if you do, leave a like on the video. If you do want to support me, subscribe. That's the best way to do it. Let's me know I'm doing things right. Dislike it if you did not like it and you really have some improvement opportunities. Otherwise, just go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked or didn't like in your words. I will read them. Try to comment back myself. As always, my friends, remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and I will see you all next time.